Hey guys, welcome back. It's Lucky here. Today we're going to go over everything you need to know to unlock all 10 vocations in Dragon's Dogma 2. And in this guide, I'm going to walk you through the process step by step for each vocation to make sure that you don't get halfway through one and then find yourself not knowing what to do next to unlock it. Let's start with two of the first and easiest ones to unlock, and that's going to be the Sorcerer and the Warrior. You're going to unlock both of these from the same NPC here in Burnsworth. That's this town right here. If you're not sure where that is, basically you've got this massive body of water on the right side of the map. It's just normal of that right here in this little dent and in Vernsworth you're going to be here. Here's the big town square in the middle of the town. You're going to go up these stairs here, and then you're going to get to these stairs that go up to the inn. You're going to go to the right of those instead, go into this little tunnel, and you're going to find the Vernsworth Vocation Guild. On the map, you're always going to be looking for this symbol right here, these two daggers, and you're going to talk to this NPC, and he's going to explain to you that they're all out of sorcerer and warrior weapons, so they can't accept any more people for those vocations until they get those weapons back in their supply. So he's going to tell you that you can find those weapons for them at the Trevo mine. So exhaust his dialogue options and then come over here to the west side of town. There's an exit from town right here. You're going to come to this one right here, and that's going to put you here on the map. So we zoom out and basically where we're going is right here. This is Trevo mine. So you're just going to follow this path right here up to Trevo Mine. It's probably a five minute walk if you sprint straight there and ignore everything on the way there. Very, very quick. Once you're inside the Trevo Mine, you're gonna come up and then in the first big room that you find yourself in, you're gonna find a chest and that's going to have the warrior weapon. Then you're gonna come inside farther in and then eventually you're gonna find a room that has some crevices and some layers to it. You're gonna go down all the way to the bottom of this room and look into the dead ends in there and you're going to find another chest and that's going to have the sorcerer weapon. Now you have both weapons and technically Technically, you're done here for this quest. However, the main story quest is going to ask you to full clear this place. So it's not a bad idea to full clear it while you're here, since you're already here, if you haven't done that yet. After you've retrieved both of those weapons from Treble Mine, all you have to do is run back, come back to Vernsworth, head back to the Vocation Guild, talk to the NPC, and you'll now be able to acquire the Sorcerer and the Warrior. Next up, we have the Mystic Spear Hand. There's a couple of ways to unlock the Mystic Spear Hand. One is very early on, you're going to find yourself fighting against a dragon in Mel. After you fight the dragon, you'll see an NPC that looks like this. And if you talk to him, he's going to make a comment about you being the Arisen, and he's going to give you the Mystic Spear Hand vocation. However, if you don't talk to him, or if you're past this part of the game and you already missed this, don't worry. What you can do is you can find that same NPC somewhere else. Else. He's going to leave Melv and he's going to end up southwest here in Harb Village. Raid sucks, raid sucks, raid sucks, raid sucks. What? Raid, it sucks. There's no doubt. Oh, you want more than 800 heroes, PvE and PvP modes, and clan bosses? 800? And where is that music coming from? Yeah, and it added Cursed City, an all new type of content where you can complete quests and unlock mythical champions. Yeah, but it's a time grinder. I mean, yeah, it's great for killing time or just giving your hand something to do while you watch TV. Okay, but there's no point in playing the game unless you dump loads of cash into it. I mean, it's a free phone game, so you could spend money to advance faster, but by no means do you have to spend money to advance faster. Even the biggest content creators have free to play accounts. Spending money on it is totally optional, so why not try it out for yourself? Raid's giving massive bonuses to new players. In order to get these bonuses, you have to download Raid using my link in the description or by scanning the QR code on screen. These new player bonuses include Epic Champion, Lady Atessa, 500,000 silver, and much more. Plus, after reaching level 25, you can get an additional 500,000 silver, Epic Skill Tomes, and more. But that's not all. After downloading via my link, be sure to use promo code FESTIVAL5 to get another Epic Champion, Tayrell, and 500,000 silver. Once you've done all that, join clan Vegeta Best Arc 8888 and we'll see you on the battlefield. What the heck was that? Thanks for listening. Now let's get back to the video. To get to Har Village, you just basically hug the coastline leaving Vernsworth here. So if you leave Vernsworth, just hug the coastline, you know, keep hanging lefts until you get to Har Village. In Har Village, you'll be able to find him here in the coastal hut. Just talk to him. He doesn't have a whole lot to say. He just basically comments on you being the Arisen and boom, you have the vocation. He's, he's a man of few words. 
Unlocking the Mystic Spear Hand is one of the easiest and quickest ones, so there's not a lot that you can do wrong here. If you go to Melv too early and the Dragon Event doesn't spawn, do a little bit of the main story quest, then come back and it should happen. All right, now let's go over how to unlock the Trickster. There's a couple of different ways to unlock the Trickster, and it's really up to you which one you choose. I will say that the easiest one is going to be to do the main story in Vernsworth, do the quest for the NPC until he sends you to Checkpoint Rest Town. He's going to say go there and what you're going to do is you'll come to Vernsworth, you'll get on an ox cart and this ox cart will leave from here and it'll take you straight to checkpoint. So boom, you just basically teleport there. You get on the ox cart, you fall asleep. So anytime you're using ox carts, just in case you didn't know, if you go to the ox cart station and it doesn't let you get on, you just have to sit on the bench that's right there, pass the time, snooze a little bit until you can get on the ox cart and he gives you the option to pay him money to take you to checkpoint rest town. And so now that you're in checkpoint rest town, you'll get off your ox cart, you'll head down the street here and you'll swing by Ibrahim scrap store. From here, you'll pick up the beast mask. You'll buy that. Then you'll go back up and out and around and then right here you're going to talk to the guard and the guard's going to let you through if you have the letter that you acquired from the main story quest and you have the beast mask and then it's just a matter of jogging down this path following it here and talking to the npc right here you'll walk up to her have a conversation with her and you can exhaust the dialogue if you want to and when you stop talking to her she's going to give you the trickster vocation now if you want to come straight here and you want to bypass doing the main story quest first and you just want to pick up trickster right away jump in the game and then run straight here what you can do is make your way to vernsworth then follow this coastline here right you just follow the coastline always hugging the left pass by har village go over this bridge and then you've got guerco cavern here you'll see it in the cliff face you don't want to go in there though that's the exit that's where it spits you out if you make a wrong turn when you enter guerco cavern right here so you'll hug this cliff face keep your left hand on the wall basically until you find guerco cavern from here you're going to try to navigate these caverns and be spit out right here. You've got about a 50 50 chance of making the right turns in here. If you make a wrong turn, it'll spit you out and you'll end up here. You just have to walk around, come back in and then take the other paths and it'll spit you out right here. If you don't want to get lost, I will put the Guerco Caverns walkthrough at the end of this video. Just check the timestamps to find it. Then you follow this path. Maybe grab this rift stone while you're there. Follow this path, follow it, you know, right here and it's going to spit you out into Bakpatal. From Bakpatal, you just run up to the trickster again. This path is pretty sketchy and it's a pretty long run. So as with any of the paths where I tell you, you can just run straight there. Make sure you bring some curatives like some elixirs, some stamina elixirs. If you have a handful of each of those things, you should have no problem just sprinting by all the enemies. And then if one or two of them happens to hit you from time to time, you just pop the elixir and you just keep on huffing it and you'll make these runs in very short order, maybe 10 minutes every time you have a long run like that. The third option for the trickster is if you come to the checkpoint rest town, but you can't get through the gate for whatever reason. Maybe you don't have the money for the mask. Maybe you haven't progressed the main story quest far enough. You can head back out the gate that you came in, head back down this path and then see this water right here. There's a ravine and you're going to walk inside of that ravine and you're going to follow it around the gate. Basically, we're sneaking around the gate and you can come in here. And if you play an archer, you pretty much want to come this way if you're playing an archer because there's a really nice bow in here. It's the best bow you can get at this point in the game. So you just look out for chests while you're running along this path. You can't miss it. And you'll find a chest that has a really good bow for you. Then you're going to come around here and boom, run over to the trickster again. So there's three different ways to get to the trickster. Two of them you don't have to progress the story at all for, but they take a bit more running. And the easiest one is if you stop in Vernsworth, do some of the main story quests for a bit and then just kind of pass through the gate and head over to her. All right, next up, we're going to do the magic archer and the warfarer, and we're going to be doing both of them at the same time because they both unlock in the same place. And because they both unlock in the same place from two different NPCs, they have a lot of overlapping pieces to their quest. So you're going to be able to do both of these and unlock them both at the same time. So you're going to need two things before you can start this. The first of which is at checkpoint rest town you're going to need to swing by ibrahim's scrap store and pick up the beast mask you're also going to need to make sure you have three medicinal herbs on you you probably have a hundred of them if you're the type of person that's been collecting everything they walk by but just make sure you have three medicinal plants on you you're going to need them so beast mask and three medicinal plants if you haven't been watching the rest of this video to get to the checkpoint rest town the easiest way is just to take a cart from vernsworth here's the ox cart right here so get on that 
If there's a bench right next to it. You can wait at the bench and pass time until the ox cart lets you on. Then you get on the ox cart. It's going to take you to checkpoint rest town from the ox cart in checkpoint. You're going to follow the paths right here to this little piece of paper with a pen on it. And that's Ibrahim scrap store. That's where you can pick up the mask from checkpoint. Now you're going to want to make your way to Bak Batal. So if you've progressed the main story quest far enough, you'll be able to go through the gate right here and just get on the ox cart and ride that to Bak Batal. If you haven't progressed the main story quest far enough, you're going to have to come back out of town, take this ravine right here. That's what this kind of blue and black is. That's like a ravine. You follow that. And you're going to sneak around all of this and it's eventually going to let you run down here to Bak Batal. Okay, while you're in Bak Batal, if you're planning on picking up Warfare at some point, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to come up here to the Higgs Tavern stand. That's this place here. You're going to see Higgs Tavern stand. And when you get there, you'll see some stacks of things sitting next to a pen. Equip the beast mask that we picked up in Checkpoint Rest Town earlier. Then set your uh, pack inside the pen. And then this NPC is going to talk to you and a shop will become available. Once you have access to a shop, you're going to want to buy two bottles of newt liquor. So now that you have two bottles of newt liquor, you only need one more to unlock the warfarer. And the third one will be found in just a moment at the magic archer's house. Now we're leaving Bak Batal. We have our two bottles of newt liquor and we have our three medicinal herbs of any type. Just some medicinal herbs. You probably have a bunch of them already, but just make sure you have at least three. The type doesn't matter. You're going to leave and you're going to follow this path here. And we're heading to marker number two. We're going to try to get to marker number three to start the magic archer quest. And then marker number four to unlock the warfarer and the magic archer. So leave Bak Batal, run down the path. Get to Drabnir's Grotto. This is gonna be kind of a windy cave system where you're never gonna feel like you know if you're going the right direction, but you almost certainly are. So just keep following it, following it, following it, and it's eventually gonna spit you out here. From here, you're gonna be outside. Things are gonna to start to finally look happy and green again. And you'll see an old man on the road. He's bent over, he's got back pain. You're gonna give him three herbs. That's why we wanted to pick those up. And he's gonna say, thanks, man, come back to my house. So if you don't wanna wait for him, just pick him up, carry him in your arms, and carry him up this road right here around the bend and you'll finally arrive at the wind walkers home the wind walker is the maester who will teach you the magic archer vocation while you're at the wind walkers home the first thing you want to do is pick up the bottle of newt liquor that thing is worth 5,000 gold. So that's why we only bought two from the NPC earlier because we could just grab the third one here, save some coin. Now you have three bottles of newt liquor on you. You're gonna talk to the old man in the wind walker here for a bit. She's not gonna trust you. And the old man is gonna ask you to escort him to the volcanic island camp because there's a hot spring here. He thinks it's going to fix his back. So you graciously accept. Once again, you can pick him up and carry him because he's going to oftentimes walk slower than you'd like him to. And you can run by all of the enemies this whole way. And if you do do that, it's not going to take you very long. Maybe uh, maybe 10 minutes to run from here to here. Once you are in the volcanic island camp, you'll come in this door right here. You'll walk around this path. Walk onto these planks. You'll see a ladder right here. Come up the ladder. You'll walk through this little cave system and then you'll come out right here. And the warfare NPC will be sitting here. Just talk to him, give him your new liquor. He'll tell you that he likes it. Then talk to him again and give him the other two bottles of new liquor. He'll really enjoy it as a token of his appreciation. He'll give you the warfare job. So boom, you have the warfare job. Then walk forward a few steps, get inside the hut for this hot spring. And the old man will tell you he's going to go jump in the hot spring for his back. And the wind walker will appear. And she'll tell you that she basically followed you all the way here because she didn't trust that you were going to keep the old man safe. And as a token of her appreciation, she's going to give you the magic archer vocation as well as a scroll for the most powerful ability the vocation has to offer. This is the one that you can hold down and it consumes more and more of your health, but it's also going to do more and more damage the longer you hold it down. And just like that, you unlock the warfare and the magic archer 
at the same time. Now, Dragon's Dogma 2 is full of little new player traps, things that you can do that are going to cost you a ton of time and money. It's really easy to make these mistakes and it's really easy to avoid them as well. If you want to avoid making mistakes that are going to cost you a ton of time and money, check out the video popping up in the top right corner of the screen right now or linked in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe for more content. Massive shout out to my YouTube channel members. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel in the big way you do. To become a channel member for perks like having your name appear at the end of every video and access to a private Discord channel where you can ask me any question you want to about any game we're playing, click the join button below or check out the link in the description. And don't forget to take advantage of my link down in the description below to play Raid Shadow Legends so that you can start off strong with all those bonus rewards worth over $100. If you're not sure what to do next, check out one of these Dragon's Dogma 2 videos popping up on screen right now.